Hello, this is Hansen, and welcome to my setup guide on how to set up Kubeflow on AWS. So before we get started, I'm just going to go over some of the benefits and features of Kubeflow, just in case you're on the fence about setting it up on AWS for your team. Before we go to the demo, there's also a prereq that you have to do, which is essentially just getting the AWS uh, access keys for your user, just so that we can set up the AWS CLI as we're going to be doing the entire installation through the CLI, since I found that to be the easiest way to get up and running. So let's get started. So why Kubeflow? Well, Kubeflow is a MLOps tool that provides an end-to-end -end solution that connects a lot of the things that you do in the MLOps world to the benefits of containerization, container orchestration. So without Kubeflow, you would imagine an ML developer to essentially build their application wrap it all up and containerize it, and then deploy this for Kubernetes to do all the orchestration, the resource management, as well as the uh, cluster deployment, right? So with Kubeflow, since this is built right on top of Kubernetes, if your team is already using Kubernetes, and a lot of developers are, you have an additional added benefit of all these ML capabilities on top. So you have things like Jupyter Notebooks, um, model training, and there's also included functions where you can parallelize the training as well. There's uh, automatic hyperparameter tuning, model serving, as well as the typical machine learning uh, pipelines that you essentially you know, are, are pretty familiar with when it comes to MLOps tools. The other thing that you get too is that you get, again, scalability because of Kubernetes. But because things are dockerized or containerized, you also can have this application work and be deployed in multiple cloud servers, right? So you're not bounded to some specific environment that only exists on one sort of device. And in addition to that, you also have the typical MLOps tools, such as like version control and standardized workflows and um, the, the tool's own version, I guess, of that, right? So what are the features based on the benefits that I just discussed? What are the specific features of Kubeflow that you're getting, right? So you can host Jupyter Notebook servers. So you can have different servers with notebooks inside that you can share and collaborate with other uh, team members. And each of these servers can have their own uh, Python environment. You also have Kubeflow pipelines, which is, again, it's a lot of ML tools have this sort of pipeline sort of paradigm already. So with Kubeflow, it's, it's nothing different. Uh, we also have CATIB, which is the hyperparameter search, distributed training uh, with TensorFlow and PyTorch support, and then you have your model serving and your know, version control, what have you. So for the prereqs, uh, again, you just need the AWS access keys uh, just so that you can set up your AWS CLI. And once you have that up and running, there's also a link here, if as well as in the guide, if you need help setting that up. And once you're ready to do that, we can move on to the demo. All right, let's get started with installing Kubeflow. So the first thing that we want to do is start an EC2 instance, and this is going to be where we set up the Kubeflow head node. So it is possible to set this up as a Docker uh, image or Docker container on your local host, and then just have the cluster be deployed onto AWS. However, just for the sake of following the installation, we're just going to start an EC2 instance and we're gonna be following the vanilla installation that is recommended in the AWS Kubernetes installation docs. There are additional options to add, let's say Amazon RDS, uh, S3 buckets, maybe if you want Cognito authentication, you're able to do that as well. And there's additional extra lines that you can add on to the, uh, to the deployment to have those capabilities. But for now, just to have the most straightforward setup process possible, we will essentially just set up the EC2 instance. So without further ado, what we want to do is just open up a new instance. So I'm on the console, I go to the dashboard and I will launch an instance. And I'm going to select an Ubuntu instance and I'm going to set this to just some default TensorFlow image here. The next thing I'm going to do is just make my configuration storage just 500 gigabytes just for the sake of having some extra space. And then what we're going to do is just click launch instance. So once that's launched, we're going to wait for it to boot up and we will go to the terminal and SSH in once we have our IP address right here. 
All right, so once we have our EC2 instance up and it is running and checks have passed, you should have a IP address to SSH into it. To SSH into it, here's the command. You have SSH and then the path to your key, as well as this extra flag here, the dash L, which will allow us to bind to a port. So we want to bind to the kubeflow dashboard, which is going to be on port 8080. And you can map this to whichever local port that you would like. And for the AWS instance that we started, the username is going to be Ubuntu by default. And then this is where you put in your IP address. So since I've already had all of this bookmarked, I'm essentially just going to SSH kubeflow AWS. Cool. Now I'm in. All right, so now that we're in the instance, we want to do a quick sudo apt update and apt install for some of the packages that we're going to be needing to pull in the Kubeflow GitHub repo so that we can get the installation going. So for this command, I'm going to do sudo apt update, sudo apt install. And for cleanup, I'm just going to do a sudo apt auto remove. Great. Clear this. And now we're going to pull in the Kubeflow GitHub repository. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export a couple variables here. So the first one being the Kubeflow release version at the time of writing will be 1.6.1. And I'm going to also grab the AWS uh, mandatory installation files. So this is going to be the AWS release version 1.6.1 that's corresponding to Kubeflow's repository. And from here, I am going to git clone AWS Labs' Kubeflow manifest. I'm going to go into that. And once I'm CD into that directory, I'm going to check out the specific branch for AWS. From here, I'm going to now git clone the Kubeflow official open source repository with the specific uh, tag for version 1.6.1. And now at the time of writing, uh, since Kubeflow's documentation is based on Ubuntu 18.04, we're using 18, uh, we're using 20.04. So for anyone that's using 20.04 and above, this specific AMI that we're using right now, as a side note, has a outdated dependency pin. So all we have to do is go into the make file here. What we want to do is we want to search for a dependency called JQ. And from here, we just want to comment out the specific pinned versions since it's going to work without pinning it to the specific version anyway. The command should look like this in the installation script and you should be good. So we are going to just exit and save this. And now we can proceed with calling the automated installation script. So we're going to do a make install dash tools. This is going to take a while. So just take a break and come back to this. All right, awesome. Now that we have this, we're going to just double check and make sure that we are running Python 3.8. If we aren't, then for this one, we're using 3.10. We want to just change it back to 3.8 as that is the supported one in the documentation. So that's very easy to do. We will modify our bash RC. So we'll do a sudo nano bash RC. And we just want to set our alias here. Python equals Python 3.8. And if you're also getting errors when you're installing pip packages saying that your Ubuntu local bin is not in your path, be sure to also add in this path as well. We're going to save here and we're just going to quickly source this. And when you type in Python, you should have Python 3.8. Great. So Pretty much what we just did here was we had an installation for the AWS CLI, specifically on this EC2 instance. We'll also have installed the EKS control, which is the command line tool for working with EKS clusters, kube control, which is the command line interface for working with Kubernetes clusters, YQ is for YAML processing, JQ is for JSON processing, and we have Python, pip, you know what those are and some other additional dependencies required to set up uh, the Kubeflow infrastructure. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to configure the AWS CLI specifically on this EC2 instance. So I'm going to do AWS configure and I'm going to name my profile Kubeflow. And from here, this is where you take your AWS access key 
as well as your secret access key and input them into this interactive terminal here. When you go through the setup, you're going to be asked after those two access key uh, requests, you're going to be asked for your default region name. So just select the region name that uh, you use the most. So for me, I'm using US East 1. Uh, and the default output format, make sure you put in JSON at the very last. Once you have your AWS CLI configured, we are going to now make sure that we use that AWS profile. So if you want to set this as the permanent profile to use, you can feel free to add it to your bash RC. For the time being, we're just going to export it here for our bash session right now. And if you want to double check to see if your CLI was configured properly, you can do AWS status, get caller identity. Now that we have our EC2 instance set up, it's time for us to set up our EKS cluster, which will be the actual cluster nodes that are actually doing the work. So to do this, we will export our cluster name. So for us, it's Kubeflow demo. Uh, well, for my EC2 instance, it's Kubeflow demo. So I'm going to leave it as that. And I'm going to leave my cluster region to be US East 1. And before we call this uh, EKS control CLI command, I want you to pay close attention to the note that I left in the blog post, which uh, discusses a EKS version change where if you are running an EKS version that is greater or, or equal to 1.23, make sure you look at the documentation to install the Amazon EBS CSI driver. And I've also linked that information into the blog post as well. So for us, we're going to avoid all this and essentially just install version 1.22 for this demo. So feel free to copy and paste the command in the blog post where we will define our cluster region uh, the version number, cluster name, give a prefix to our node group name, as well as the type of node that we want to start. So for me, it was just m5.xlarge, and we will define other parameters such as how many nodes are in the cluster, how many are we going to have constantly on, which is nodes min, as well as the maximum amount of nodes that we want. And what you're going to notice that it's is that it's going to start creating this EKS cluster. This is going to take a little bit, so make sure you just go grab a drink or something and come back to this later. If you also look at your cloud formation uh, section in the AWS console, so if I go over to my browser, you'll notice that in cloud formation you'll you'll see a cloud formation stack start to uh, start to be created in progress. So cloud formation is just AWS's infrastructure as code service and what we just did on the CLI is that we launched a command that uh, instantiates an EKS cluster. And what this will do is that it will start to create all the resources necessary to create this Kubernetes cluster. In addition to deploying this EKS cluster, what this CloudFormation stack is doing is it's also creating a virtual private cloud for the cluster and configure it with the necessary subnets, route tables, and security groups. And the command will also create an IAM identity uh, for the EKS control plane to essentially control all your AWS resources automatically in the background. Now that the CloudFormation stack is all been deployed, you should see three completes. And also, if you look at your terminal, you should notice that now you are done with creating all of them and you are just greeted with a blank, uh, blank input line in the bottom of your bash. So the next thing that we have to do is deploy Kubeflow to the EKS clusters. And what we want to do is we'll use Customize, which was one of the packages that was installed when we called the make install tools um, earlier in our EC2 instance. We're going to use Customize to now do make deploy Kubeflow, and we'll set our installation option to Customize, and we'll click Yes. Once that final long wait is done, you should be able to observe that a bunch of services have been deployed onto the EKS cluster. So there are a series of commands listed in the blog post to check if these services are up. So for instance, I'm going to just paste a couple of them. These are the cube control git pods, and then you'll pass in the namespace. So for example, I passed in to check if the cert certification manager was up and the Istio system. So once you check that everything is good and running, um, we should now be able to open up the Kubeflow dashboard. So for EC2 instances, all we have to do is type make, look forward, 
and this will now map uh, port 8080. And since we SSH'd in with already a map for our local uh, for our local port to map to port 8080 on our EC2 instance, we should be able to simply go to uh, localhost and then whatever port you mapped it, and we should be able to see our Kubeflow login. So this is my browser, and by default, Kubeflow does make the default username uh, user at example.com, and the password is 12341234. Once you're logged in, you should see and be greeted with the home page where you have quick shortcuts, uh, some sample notebooks, as well as some documentation, as well as all the tools on the side menu here where you can look into opening up a Jupyter Notebook instance, um, do some auto-tuning, uh, serve some models, and run pipelines. So this is just, we're just focusing for the demo on the installation of Kubeflow on AWS, but make sure you look out for future guides on Kubeflow, with the next one being setting up a official Kubeflow ML pipeline from starting with your Jupyter Notebook on Kubeflow. So make sure you stay tuned, and until next time.